for the useless news. Useless news. Right here on the Big Dumb Fun Show. Venkman reporting. Good evening, everybody. My name is Venkman. This is the useless news. Heard only on the the one and only Big Dumb Fun Show. Was that, uh, what was that? That was a couple solicits, right? That was a triple shot of solicit. God, they're good. But that was the, the very first one, though. Was their their brand spanking brand new, new one? It's actually a little bit slower than like "Blow Me Away," right? But it still is enough to knock your socks off. So, illicit triple shot on the Big Dumb Funch. If you're listening live, you totally heard that. If you're not, then you missed out, my friend, brother. You missed out. The useless news is always brought to you by Uncle Rusty's Pure Pork Salsa, the only salsa out there that could also. Take the paint right off your house. It could also blow your socks off. It could also blow your socks off. Uh, come Usually this it's winter six time. to eight hours after ingesting the Uncle Rusty's, though. <laughs> By the way, for the record, for anyone uh, paying attention right now, please someone remind me to talk about Gunnar's underwear sometime later in the show. Well, I'll slip on over that way, and that'll remind you itself. I wanted to start off with a really disgusting story, and uh, it has to do with uh, New York toll workers... Um, and how much they make. How much would you think a, just a, a toll booth operator, toll booth Willie, would make? Off the top of your head. All right, $40,000 a year. Try $102,670. What are they, taking the tolls home? Port Authority toll collectors not only grab your money at New York's New Jersey crossings, they're now pulling down stunning six-figure salaries funded by the levies you pay at the bridges and tunnels 24 toll collectors at the Bi-State Agency have made more than $80,000 so far in 2011. Payments pumped up by massive overtime. Seven of those workers took in $90,000 or more. In overtime? But that's chump change to the top toll taker. Warren Stevens has made $102,670 so far this year. $40,614 has been uh, just pure unadulterated overtime. With overtime paid a time and a half, Stevens averaged about 20 hours of overtime per week or about 130 extra eight-hour shifts per year. An analysis of uh, data shows Karen Dupree is the number two highest paid toll taker, making $97,621, more than a third uh, from uh, just overtime pay. You know what? They're probably covering somebody else's shift, and that's because nobody wants to stand in that booth for eight hours. The annual salaries will only swell since the figures released Friday for all of the 6,777 employees do not include December paychecks. That, that didn't include December at all. I bet they're working overtime all the time. That's 11 months, 100 grand. Now, I know that price of living, cost of living is a little different in New York, but 100 grand's got to be big anywhere, right? I would imagine they save on their toll cost. Don't they get a, that for free? I almost wonder, like, how much the, the the toll booth is bringing in. And would it almost just be worth it not to charge a toll? Oh, like, I bet those toll booths are bringing in way more than that. think so? I don't know how much a toll costs. I've never, I mean, never been there. Never had any interest in driving to Jersey. I've had to go through some toll in Chicago. Yeah? I, I swear, they seemed like they were about every two miles. When I lived in Iowa, there was a toll bridge... And it looked like a troll should live under it. I was like, seriously, this is a this is the bridge that what is, what is the toll for? To and go you, across the bridge to Nebraska? Yeah, to, for, uh, yeah, exactly. It's to go from uh, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think where that was. It, it was uh, going over from Iowa over to Nebraska, yeah. and that was like the back way to get into my house. It was like a shortcut, but damn, it's like two dollars on, on principle. I wanted to drive all the way around and you know up into Omaha just just on the principle of the matter. Because this bridge sucks. It's like a two-lane bridge. Uh-huh. We were moving there, so I wanted to really watch my mileage. And so we're moving there. We got this big-ass U-Haul. And I'm like, oh, we'll just go this way. It's, it's shorter. Didn't know it was a toll. So first of all, you know me. I don't carry change. And so we had to, like, stop there and back up all of this traffic while we try to Come find, up with- like, my parents a couple cars back to, <laughs> to see if we can ask them for change. We get out there, and finally the truck is able to go across the bridge. I was scared to death. It was the crappiest bridge. If the toll goes to the bridge, it should have been a lot higher. <laughs> should have been a nicer bridge. The driving public is a little less enthused, especially after they hiked its tolls to $4 this past summer at six of its crossings. 
Quote, any commuter is going to be outraged, said Kathleen Lewis, a spokesman for the AAA New Jersey. Any toll increase should be uh, paying for infrastructure. It shouldn't be paying for the excessive salaries. Toll collectors. Those people work those hours. Whose they're, ranks, they're, I mean, it's excessive nonetheless. Somebody had to work. I mean, what are they going to do? Not have a tool, toll booth operator? Those ranks have dwindled to 100. People are going to have to drive by and just simply throw their loose change into the basket. Now they've got the electronic. And drive on. They have the electronic easy pass system. So if you've got that, you don't even have to go to the toll booth. So they, not everybody has that. Otherwise, they, they wouldn't need all those operators, and they wouldn't be working all those overtime hours. They only have 147 toll booth operators. Odds uh, are total. someone's calling in sick an awful lot. At least 11 of those folks are. <laughs> <laughs> they should really get to the bottom of that. Yeah. Who's calling in sick? I want to know. I want to know more about uh, Warren Stevens. <laughs> like, how much overtime this guy's working? This guy. You know, no one ever wants to say yeah, I'm a toll booth operator, but uh, by God, if, it, if I'm making over a hundred grand a year, that's right. I take those tolls, and you best have <laughs> exact change, Jive Turkey. I don't know why he would call people Jive Turkeys. I just added that in. An Arkansas man has had his death penalty conviction overturned because one juror. During the case, was tweeting, and another juror fell asleep. 26-year-old Erickson Dimas Martinez was found guilty in 2010 of robbing and murdering a 17-year-old boy outside of a party in 2006. During his trial, one juror fell asleep, and the other one posted on his Twitter account regarding the case. While the tweets did not divulge any details of the case, the juror went against specific instructions to not discuss the case at any manner, online or off. One of the tweets made during the sentence itself said, Choices to be made, hearts to be broken. We each define the great line. The juror also took to Twitter to comment about his time serving as a juror and even about the quality or lack thereof of the coffee at the courthouse, tweeting, The coffee here sucks. <laughs> Bad coffee will ruin everything. It does that, too. The defense team pointed you, out his behavior to the You think the, the judge. guy tweeted, juror next to me sleeping. <laughs> he told the juror to stop tweeting about the case. Despite his behavior, the juror was not thrown out. And because, because of that, his case is overturned. How crazy is that? It goes into more details, but we could really care How would they know? They had to, like, go back and go, okay, well, yeah. we had these were the jurors. I mean, the, the, the defense and the prosecution. Any, let's see if had, any of them have a Twitter account. Both of them agree on the And if jurors. they were tweeting during the trial. And then we can ask for a mistrial because they were tweeting. Absolutely. I mean, that's what, the guy, that's what they do now. Like, it used to be that the jurors would be on lockdown. You know, you had to just trust them not to discuss it with their friends and family if, if they weren't going to be sequestered the entire time. But now it doesn't matter. You can sequester them all you want. They can still tweet about it. I mean, that's just where it gets it gets ridiculous. I mean, you can't tweet just because you're a juror. What next? No Facebook posts? No. Yeah. They expect us not to Facebook about this. Are you serious? I just want people to know my favorite song while I was doing my public service. <laughs> Here's what you got to do. You got to pay pay jurors a little bit more. I mean, hell, you're paying the, the toll workers. <laughs> My name is Bankman. That's the Useless News on the Big Dumb Fun Show. Submit your own craft at the show. Useless News at BigDumbFunShow.com or Facebook.com slash The Useless News.